What's up LEGO Builders? Welcome back to Coconut Brick Studios. Recently, I've been building a lot of gray blobs, I mean military bases. So today, I'm mixing things up and building three LEGO Star Wars mocks at three different price ranges. One of which you could build for less than the cost of a Subway sandwich. Make sure you don't eat it. I like exploring what different pieces and budgets can offer and I've been wanting to do some nature builds. So I'm gonna take advantage of some whips and dinosaur tails to create some alien looking trees. So if you're ready for some LEGO glizzies and cathedrals, don't forget to execute order 66 on that like button and let's get building. With the really small vignette type builds, I try to focus more on the frame and making it look cool and interesting. Since with a larger mock, there's more to look at and enjoy, so what it's built on isn't always as important. I'm going to build a black snot oval frame for the mock to sit on. I put two headlight bricks in the middle so I can connect the actual build to it. Turns out my collection of black slopes is kind of weak because I only had one black inverted 1x2 slope, so I had to get a little creative and use some half pegs to connect some regular slopes to the back of the frame. This first price point is always hard because I want to go as cheap as possible to create a more of a challenge for myself, but I don't want to go too cheap and create something underwhelming, since we all know what the potential of a $1 mock is going to be. So I've found $10 to be a great price point because it's still small enough to be intriguing and can help showcase parts and a mock you can build for less than the price of a subway footlong. Although in this economy, that's not as much of a flex as it used to be. Now we get to the expensive part grass. At 10 to 11 cents a piece, I wasn't able to use as many as I would have liked, but I still managed to create a hedge or tall grass patch of sorts that the 91st Recon Troopers using to hide in and ambush a very unlucky Nemoidian guard on patrol. As the war drags on, Republic generals know they need to strike a crippling blow to the Seps if the tide is going to turn anytime soon. The Purse Planet of Cato Nemoidia provides a tempting prospect and, if it were to fall into Republic hands, would be a huge blow to the Nemoidians, their bank account, and their ego, and perhaps cause them to reconsider the value of continuing the civil war. This particular Nemoidian guard was casually strolling the perimeter of a CIS outpost slash landing pad when his Monday afternoon plans were interrupted by a knife-wielding clone trooper. This is a great example that you don't need much to create a cool looking mock. Take advantage of a cool base and focus on minifig poses that you don't often see to create something new and exciting. This is the middle tier mock range where a lot of people find themselves building. You have a decent parts collection and some more rare parts at your disposal which in the case of this mock are going to be some whips. I'm once again doing a freeform frame since when it comes to outdoor nature based mocks I like a more fluid and dynamic shape to build on. I'm currently building a large Mimban mock and for the terrain I've been experimenting with using different colored wedge plates to represent different levels of dirt or clay. So I'm borrowing that idea here and building a base of dark orange clay and topping that off with some medium nougat all covered up by green terrain. And since I've got a bigger budget I can splurge on some dark orange wedge plates which are almost worth their weight in gold these days. When it comes to trees I've spent years struggling to get the right look but recently I've had some success using dinosaur tails to create the roots and trunk. That makes for some very smooth, not blocky looking trees, which is typically what mine end up looking like. So I set four up to create the trunk and finally got to use these reddish brown whips I've been waiting to build with for literally years now. They make perfect little vines that wrap around the tree and the ends can be secured in place in the dino tail trunk. It's like these pieces were built to be used together. This tree is a little on the expensive side at almost 10 bucks, but it's so worth it in my opinion, as this is about as realistic and smooth as you can possibly get for a Lego tree. I have another one of these already built which I'll be assimilating into this build minus the killer hormigant from Warhammer 40k that's for coconuts kingdom. I have really high hopes for this mock and once the trees are in I can cover up the base with various plants to hide the blocky transition from tree trunk to roots. This was a big realization for me because now instead of just trying to perfect weird clunky parts of a build I can just cover them up with plants and vines. Although unfortunately that doesn't work with all builds. Bruh. The ground's a little too flat, so I'll add some texture with a sprinkling of one by plate just enough to break up the terrain but stay within the budget range. I decided to make this a battle between a powerful Sith and Jedi Master since, well, the whole Sith and Jedi storyline has been through a bit of a rough patch recently and needs a little love. And I wanted to see some Sith stuff that didn't involve group singing or random bathing scenes. I'll be doing that mock in private. Oh yeah. Now I just need to add some final foliage details and the minifigs. A Jedi Master meditates peacefully in a small clearing as sunlight peeks through the trees, warming him in the rock speed. Having breakfasted, he seeks further enlightenment when suddenly a shadow appears in his mind, cutting through the tranquil fog. The Master senses the Sith just before he bursts into the clearing, red saber aglow as he leaps to deliver a killing blow. The Master's blade ignites and clashes with the Sith in midair, stopping him, but the Jedi still hasn't moved. His saber is hovering in midair, being wielded through the Force. The Sith Class, having finally found a worthy opponent. The minifig poses really stole the show with this one. I really like the vibrance of all the bright colors. Doing two different ones under the green really improved the aesthetic of the build, and what more can I say about those awesome trees? 
This is the price tier I really get to have some fun with. I have the money for some base plates, which were surprisingly expensive, but that's because I got the dark bluish gray ones. I'm gonna make a black frame to go around the edge because why not? And it just looks cool. I have big plans for this mall because I recently was walking around a nearby college campus, which was full of massive cathedral and castle type buildings, which got me wanting to try my hand at one. This will be a bit of a challenge for me since I excel at real simple brutalist type builds that don't have a lot of fancy details on them. While on the other hand, abbeys and cathedrals are just a series of towers, pillars, arches, designs, pop-outs, jogs, and just about any other complicated type of architecture you can think of. <sighs> so I'm going to start small and build just the front of a cathedral with a focus on the doorway. I took this picture to use as inspiration and built an expanding archway of sorts. I'm guessing most of you have figured this out by now, but I'm not including minifigs in the cost of each mock because I feel like that's kind of a cop out. I could just build as small of a mock as I wanted and then pack it full of 2014 to 12 clones and say it's a $200 mock, which isn't really the point of this video. It's more about the parts. The side walls, I wanna make little towers that pop out of each corner, then put arches and designs into any large flat spot on the sides. It seems like having a flat stretch of wall with nothing on it is a big no-no when it comes to building these kinds of places. I can't just pretend this ancient holy site had a laser gate for a door, so I'm building a brick built one. I was going to use reddish brown to represent wood, but didn't even have enough for a small door like this, which is kind of sad. It doesn't actually open since I feel like at this point making a working door isn't really on brand here at Coconut Brick Studios. I made it a rectangle because I knew once the door was in place, the archway would finish shaping it. Now comes the really hard part, the roof. Buildings really are the bane of my existence when it comes to building Lego. It's so hard for me to get the proportions right and everything has to look symmetrical. Needless to say, it's time I start doing more mocks like this to practice. Let me know in the comments what type of buildings you would like to see me do in future videos. I want the roof to add some color to the building, so I'm going with dark blue. Not too wild to look goofy, but still able to bring some much needed contrast. As for engravings or artwork, I'm just gonna add a sword and shield emblem to the big flat spot above the door, which felt like the right vibe. Honestly, this isn't too bad for being my first time. I learned some good stuff and now I gotta fill in the courtyard. I have about $30 left in the budget, so I'm building a little wall to seal off the front. I really need some kind of walkway to the steps since we can't have people tromping around on grass before they go inside. This path of two by two tiles added up to a lot more than I expected, but it was just too necessary to leave out. Lining the path will be small podiums to hold statues, and you know me, this has to be a battle mock of some kind. So some of the statues will be intact, while others happen to be on the wrong end of some small explosive rounds. And speaking of explosive rounds, there are a couple mortar emplacements in the courtyard raining down fire on nearby droid forces and it was all fun and games for the 442nd until the droid ambush hit then they were really wishing there were some named characters nearby to hide behind that plot armor. The invasion of Cato Nemodia has gone well so far. The 91st Recon softened up the defenses and allowed Republic forces to establish ground units outside the main hanging cities. That being said, the fighting has been intense. The 442nd Siege Battalion has had their hands full providing artillery support to the front lines. One such position was firing on the CIS lines when a droid ambush was sprung out of nowhere. Caught off guard and distracted by the loud mortars, some of the clones haven't even noticed yet. Luckily, an ARC trooper was performing an inspection here and is leading a bold charge to rout the droids who are pouring into the courtyard trying to silence the 442nd's mortars. Overall, the mock turned out pretty good and is sitting at around the $120 mark. Although, mind you, that's a really rough estimate. I'm happy with the archway entrance, but need to work on the transition from lower levels to the roof for my buildings. I feel like I'm really starting to get the hang of these price point builds and they're becoming really fun to make. It was nice getting to work with new colors and designs after a month and a half of gray bases and green slabs. And it's fun to challenge myself to come up with something cool within a certain price range. I'm gonna be taking a break from destination focus builds and tackling a massive Republic War Machine coming up soon so stay tuned but that's a wrap for this one let me know in the comments what type of price point builds you would like to see me do in the future and until next time happy building